The U.S. government has spent more in the last three years than during World War I, World War II, and all of the government spending from the 1970s, 80s, and 90s combined. And this is adjusted for inflation. The government spending we've seen just over the last three years has been unprecedented, but the worst part is that official federal agencies like the Congressional Budget Office are predicting that the deficit spending is only going to get worse over the next 10 years, with deficit spending estimated to stay consistently above one trillion of today's dollars until 2030. But the government isn't exactly known for its great economic predictions. It could be that these projections actually end up being much worse or that we see the government actually come out of deficit spending over the next 10 years and possibly come back into a surplus, which is something we haven't seen since the early 2000s. Because if these pessimistic projections are correct, it would imply that the size of the national debt is going to grow to become 200% the size of the U.S. economy by 2050. That means debt would be three times the size of U.S. GDP. Now, these projections are actually based on what the Congressional Budget Office believes to be structural and predictable driving factors that drive government spending and revenue. Spending on Social Security and Medicare would make up a larger portion of government spending than anything else and make up a staggering 10% of GDP. That's very different to what we've seen between 2008 and 2023, where other forms of spending have been considerably higher than Social Security and Medicare. The government expects those to level off in the coming years, but of course that assumes that we don't see any financial crisis or pandemic over the next 30 years. Government spending rose very abruptly during those periods. If we see, for example, a war or a major recession or a pandemic, it could be that these other forms of government spending spikes up over the next three decades. So this is the first argument in favor to say that these deficit projections could actually prove optimistic because they're not taking into account the possibility that we see external shocks where the government needs to increase spending like we saw during the pandemic and during the financial crisis. But for obvious reason, the Congressional Budget Office isn't trying to predict whether we're going to see another pandemic or financial crisis. They're focusing on what they can actually predict with a certain degree of accuracy. Social Security and Medicare make up over a third of government spending today, and they're expecting that to grow significantly over the course of the next 30 years because they can predict that the population of people aged 65 years old and higher is going to increase substantially over the next 30 years. This is the chart of the U.S. population by age group, and it's showing us that the number of people that are older than 65 is going to go up from around 60 million people today to 85 million by 2050. As we age, we tend to work less and rely more on government benefits from Medicare and Social Security, and those benefits are financed by the current working population. That's how the system works. It's how it has always worked. The problem comes when the number of people that are working decreases relative to the number of people receiving the benefits. Back in 1962, there was around 4.3 workers for every person benefiting from Social Security. Today, that number is down to 2.8, and it's projected to continue declining over the next 20 years. Back in 1962, the government's budget was balanced, and government debt was actually declining relative to the size of the economy. Ever since 1982, we've seen the budget deficit begin to widen, so you can understand why debt would be projected to increase even more given that this ratio is going to be declining. This is another argument for why we should expect debt levels to rise over the coming decades, but it doesn't have to be that way. There are ways that the government could get around these problems. Believe it or not, the United States spends a lot of money today on healthcare. On average, $12,500 per person, that's almost twice the average spending on healthcare of developed economies. And by the way, that's equivalent to $4.5 trillion of spending that the government allocates to healthcare. So you can imagine a world where the U.S. government is able to manage its spending on healthcare to be more in line with developed economies, potentially saving trillions of dollars. And this is the first argument for why debt projections don't necessarily have to be that pessimistic. And many independent institutions have proposed government spending programs that could actually see debt to GDP levels come back down to 50% the size of the economy by 2050, unlike the current policy, which is expected to lead to significantly higher debt levels as the government spends more, but the revenues that it's generating from taxes are not keeping up. 
because most forms of government tax revenues are projected to stay very steady over the next 20 years, according to the Congressional Budget Office. So this is another avenue for the government to decrease its deficit spending by increasing taxes in order to finance the spending that they're doing. But research shows us that this may not be the wisest idea. When the government raises taxes, over the next four years, you tend to see GDP decline by around 2%. So there's a big impact of tax increases on economic growth. When the government cuts spending, on the other hand, that tends to have much more limited negative impacts on the economy and for a much shorter period of time. So in terms of balancing the budget, it seems that the government could be more successful cutting spending rather than raising taxes. And theoretically, it could be that politicians end up moving in that direction, which could lead national debt to become smaller relative to the size of the economy, just like following World War II and the late 1990s. Again, that is assuming that we don't see a war, a pandemic, or an economic crisis during that period. Large-scale wars, like the two world wars, have been responsible for substantial debt increases in the past and could be in the future if geopolitical tensions rise. And that's what this chart shows us. It's the geopolitical risk index, and it measures the geopolitical risk based on news coverage. Higher levels of geopolitical risk tend to happen at the same time as massive shifts in the economy. For example, the two world wars where you saw debt levels rise substantially. The projections from the Congressional Budget Office assume that the government won't need to substantially increase this defense spending over the next 30 years as a result of a large-scale war. So this chart would look something like this. Hopefully, these assumptions do end up being correct. Today, there are ongoing proxy wars in the Ukraine and the Middle East, which have made the geopolitical risk index rise a little bit. While these are contributing to the deficit spending today, they don't account for the majority of government spending like the two world wars did in the 1900s. Recessions, however, do occur much more frequently, as you can see from these recession bars here. And in the vast majority of cases, these recessions are associated with moments where deficit spending is increasing. People lose their jobs during recessions, so the number of people working goes down and the number of people that are in need of social security benefits goes up. And typically, during these periods, the government borrows money to fill in the gap. This is, again, not something that the projections from the Congressional Budget Office are taking into account. These projections are actually based on the assumption that unemployment is going to stay at 3.7% for the next 20 years. That would mean we don't see an economic downturn over the next 20 years. From what history tells us, this isn't a very likely outcome. The longest time we've seen the economy go without a recession is actually 11 years, and this happened in the 1990s, and it happened after the financial crisis. If we do see a recession over the next 20 years, it's possible that these projections of deficit spending will actually prove to be optimistic, and that government spending will have to ramp up during a recession. Of course, predicting these types of crises is very tough. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York has an indicator that gauges the probability that a recession occurs in the next year based on the yield curve. And that indicator in 2024 is still at one of the highest levels of the last 60 years. Almost every time that it has been above 30%, a recession has occurred. Of course, it could be that this indicator doesn't prove correct this time around, but it seems we may not be very far from a downturn today. But speculating that we're not going to see a downturn over the next 20 years seems a bit far-stretched.